So, obviously, just last night, the UConn Huskies took home their second consecutive NCAA championship. It was a big-time win against the number one seeded Purdue Boilermakers. This team, flat-out dominant. You'd have to put this squad up as one of the greatest college basketball teams of all time, just how they dominated throughout the Big East, just how they dominated throughout the tournament. We saw the point differential. I think they have the largest point differential um, in NCAA tournament history. From the get-go, though, the game looked like it was going to end up being a classic, right? We saw Zach Eady get himself flat-out established. He was going right at Donovan Klingon early, getting himself in rhythm, and also Braden Smith. Shout out to him. He was amazing to get the game started as well. Had a couple of big baskets inside, had some sick passes as well, and was knocking down his jumpers early. Did a great job of setting the tone for that Purdue team. And that was one underrated storyline of the game was the point guard matchup. People talk so much about the matchup between Donovan Klingon and Zach Eady, understandably so. But that point guard matchup between Braden Smith and Tristan Newton was very intriguing coming into this game. And Braden Smith looked like he owned it at the beginning, but Tristan Newton completely took over by the end, and he was the Final Four's most outstanding player. One of my favorite college basketball point guards in a very, very long time. He's just super solid, great all around. Had a couple of triple doubles this year as well. And we talk about people in this upcoming NBA draft, and people talk so much about how it's an underwhelming draft and things of that nature. This UConn team... Gives me like that Villanova Wildcats vibe, right? Remember when Villanova was winning those championships with Jay Wright when they had like Jalen Brunson and Bridges and guys like that? They give me this very similar vibe, right? Where right now there aren't guys that you look at and you're like, oh, he's going to be a future NBA superstar. But just how UConn runs that system, just how well those guys play off of each other, just how well they can make those reads and do things like that, there are a lot of guys in this UConn team, especially in my starting five, who are going to be really good in the NBA. Tristan Newton is one of them. I'm not saying he's going to be like a superstar point guard his first five years, but down the road in his NBA career, he's going to be really good. That all-around ability does not go to waste once you get into the league. I also think um, Paraban has a ton of NBA upside, right? As a really good 3 and D guy. And even some of the reads he made to get to the basket and finish around the rim were just amazing. Those guys play so, so well off of each other. And that type of stuff is super, super useful to an NBA team. So none of these guys are like top five picks at all, right? But they can be like those later draft picks who can go on our team and end up making a big impact early just on how well they play the game and just on their IQ. If you're playing in a system like a UConn system, similar to a Villanova system, there are a lot of NBA-like things they're doing as far as making reads, making those cuts to the baskets, their movements, all of those things. And I think these guys all have great NBA potential just based off of that. Donovan Klingon with his ability to defend, rim protect, playing drop coverage, which t teams love to do right now in the NBA. He could be a pick and roll threat. If he sharpens up that jumper, which I'm not too worried about right now, he could be even more of a threat. But he's solidified himself as a potential top 10, maybe top five pick in this class. But this UConn team has so many guys, as I said, who I think could go on an NBA team and make an impact early just off of how well they played off each other in college. A lot of times GMs draft, just based off of upside, right? I think this guy's going to end up being this by year three or whatever the case may be. Or right now he's got a bunch of tools and we'll wait on him to fully develop and things like that. There have been a lot of guys who have been picked based off of that. I'm looking at Patrick Williams in particular. Patrick Williams was the number five overall pick for the Chicago Bulls back in, I think, uh, 2020. In that uh, draft class, I think, with LaMelo Ball and Anthony Edwards. I'd have to go back and look. He was pretty much picked based off of his upside and physical tools. But he wasn't all that great in college. And so now we're seeing he's not growing into the player that they wanted him to be. I thought they should have went with Tyrese Halliburton at that number five pick because at that time they needed a really good playmaker. We look at him right now. They're without that amazing playmaking. If the Chicago Bulls would have picked Tyrese Halliburton at five, a lot of their issues would be solved right now. So I'm saying that to say GMs draft so much based off of upside, physical tools, and potential. Why don't GMs draft more based off of who's just balling better? 
How about that? If you're getting deep in the NCAA tournament every single year and you're playing on that final four stage in a freaking stadium every single year, like a lot of guys in his UConn team, there is so much big game experience you have. There are so many intangibles you bring to the table. That's going to be so valuable for you once you get into the league. Let's look at Jaime Jaquez. Jaime Jaquez was consistently getting deep in the NCAA tournament every single year at UCLA, right? Gets to the Miami Heat, and he hasn't been amazing as of late, but gets to the Miami Heat, and he's made an impact early. He's going to make an all-rookie team. That deep NCAA tournament experience, to me, is a major resume builder if I'm a GM looking for somebody to draft, right? And we've seen time and time again, those guys end up panning out very, very well in the NBA. Case in point, like I said, that Villanova squad. Jalen Brunson stayed a couple years at Villanova, right? Josh Hart was a couple years at Villanova. That's not a team full of one-and-done guys, right? Same with UConn. The only guy who's going to be a potential one-and-done dude is Stephon Castle. And Donovan Klingon, I think, is in his second year. So he's almost a one-and-done dude. But as far as Tristan Newton, maybe Cam Spencer, who was giving me some Dante DiVincenzo vibes last night, maybe he's got some NBA upside with his ability to shoot, move around the court, and do things like that, and the energy he brings. There are a lot of guys here on this UConn squad who have a ton of NBA upside, a ton. So I think GMs we would be missing out by sleeping on some of these guys in this UConn team that right now aren't getting a ton of draft buzz. This experience is going to mean a ton heading into the NBA. And then let's talk a little bit about Zach Eady, right? One of the most I'm not going to say divisive because I think pretty much everybody agrees that he's probably the most boring superstar in college basketball history. But regardless of that, this NCAA tournament run he had is one of the most dominant ever, flat out. And you'd have to have him in that conversation as one of the greatest college basketball players of all time. End of the day, you're going to look at that game and look at you know what he didn't do, what he could have done better. He's not going to do this in the NBA, all the negative stuff. But in hindsight, while he didn't get an NCAA championship, his individual career, his individual resume, what he did as a Purdue Boilermaker through four years was amazing. Right. And I don't think we're going to get a big man in college basketball who's going to have this buzz in a while. He's an NCAA legend, flat out. Right. Is that NBA all star superstar guaranteed? No. But let's appreciate him for what he did do. He was amazing for Purdue. He was dominant last night. There's a reason why he put up the numbers that he put up through the course of his career. We said if he gets matched up against Donovan Klingon, that'll prove just how good he really is. Got matched up against Donovan Klingon, got him in foul trouble, actually played him off the game, and ended up with an amazing stat line and was carrying that Purdue team, especially in the second half. So you can't say it was a bad Zach Eady game at all. He was amazing. His college career has been amazing. Let's sit back and let's appreciate that, right? College basketball, there's so much hate for particular players, right, or particular teams like Duke, for example. Let's look at Jared McCain. A lot of people don't like Jared McCain, but Jared McCain is a hell of a player, right? And when you take away all that unnecessary dislike of him, you realize how good he is, how much upside he has, right, and how impactful he was to that Duke team. Early in the year, it was funny to make jokes about him. By the time the NCAA tournament rolled around, you're like, oh, my God, this dude's probably their best player, right? So there's so much hate associated with specific guys in college hoops. It's good for the game. It's good for fandom. But there has to be that level of appreciation as well. Same with Christian Leitner. Everybody hated Christian Leitner in the 90s, as from what I can tell, because I wasn't alive during that time. But from what I saw, from what I heard, from the documentaries, everybody hated Christian Leitner. But you sit back and you realize, I was hating but this dude was off the chain. This dude was ridiculous during his run. Same thing with Zach Eady. Yeah, he's boring and all of that stuff, but you can't deny he was effective as hell. Can't deny it. He was great. We'll see how good he is once he gets to the NBA because there are a lot of things that he's doing now that I don't think he'll be able to kind of get away with in the league. He's not uber athletic, so I don't know how much he'll be a threat on the court, especially as a pick and roll guy. Um, those guys are usually super, super athletic players who move very, very well. Don't know about his ability to do just that. Also, the defensive stuff. Yeah, he was an amazing shot blocker and great rim protector here in Purdue. But these teams in the NBA are going to run five out. They're going to run five guys, small lineups who can shoot. They're going to do everything they can to bring him out the paint. So I can see a lot of situations where he ends up getting played off the court. Right. That's just what I think about his NBA upside. So we'll see. Right. There's a lot of work to be done. And he is a projected top 15, top 20 pick for a reason. But we'll see if he's NBA. We'll see about that. But don't let that distract you from the fact that what he did in the college game and what he did on that stage was amazing. And we're not going to get a guy like that in a very 
very, very long time. So I'm excited to see how things move for this UConn team next year, how they're able to build off of this, considering that they're going to be losing a ton of their core. Stefan Castle may be going to the draft. Tristan Newton is definitely going to the draft. Klingon is definitely going to go into the draft, right? Uh, well, I'm trying to see, think about who else. Cam Spencer may be putting his name in there. Maybe we'll see how that ends up turning out. We'll put his name in there, but we'll see if he ends up getting picked as a first round guy or maybe a second round guy. I'm not sure where he's projected at right now, but I do think he could bring some value to an NBA team so a lot of their core is going to be gone let's see how they build from this right let's see what they end up doing because they weren't super super deep but let's see how they build from this but either way we have to put them in the conversation as one of the greatest college basketball eras of all time flat out i saw a tweet today um that says duke gets way more buzz and kentucky gets way more buzz than uconn but uconn's won more championships than both of those teams over the last 25 years and that's the truth Right. We look at those two teams, Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, and know they're great and all those things. I'm taking anything away from them. We look at those teams as like the cream of the crop of college basketball. But you take a look at what UConn's done throughout the last 25 years. They're right up there with them and probably above them. Flat out. So let's get UConn at the front of our heads. It's probably the greatest college basketball program of the last 25 years. Let's get them on our head like that, right? Maybe they're not recruiting the top five freshmen every single year and bringing those guys in. But as far as what they're doing in the college game, they're right up there. They're right up there as one of the best over the last 25. So shout out to the Huskies. Shout out to Danny Hurley. And also shout out to Zach Eady for doing so well on that stage. And I think proving a lot of people wrong who were doubting him coming into the championship game.